Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Weldon from Maggie'sCrochet.com and in this video Christina is going to show you how to make this adorable little cross. This was done with sport weight cotton yarn but you could also use like a worsted weight yarn or even a, try it in a bulky weight yarn. Um, you could use this, you could put a magnet on the back, use it for a fridgy, you could make it a little bit larger maybe for a bookmark and add a little ribbon to it or you could use it as a lapel pin. Um, or an applique on something. It will look really pretty. Um, there, this is one of maybe at least eight Easter projects that we're doing and I want you to subscribe to our channel so that you'll know as soon as we have new videos come out and it really helps us out a lot if you like and share and comment on our videos. And um, I hope that you have a great happy Easter and now we'll go to a close-up and the links to everything will be listed below. Hey everybody, it's Christina from Maggie'sCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute little Easter cross applique. Uh, it's really simple. I've got all my materials here. I've got two colors of yarn. Today I'm going to make the uh, base of my cross out of the pink and I'll make the little flower out of the white. You'll need a yarn needle to finish it off. We're using a size F5 crochet hook and uh, some snippers, scissors, whatever you prefer to use. Alright, let's get started. Move everything we need out of the way. Now the first thing you need to do anytime you're starting a project, and I mention this because I always forget and then uh, end up in trouble, is you want to make sure you get the right end of your yarn and uh, make sure you pull out a good amount to start with. So I found the correct end of my yarn pulling out of the center of the skein. It's going to make things a lot easier later on. So now I can start and uh, know that things will go smoothly. I'm going to start, as always, with my little slip knot. This is uh, the Premier Yarn uh, Home Cotton Yarn, which you can find on Maggie'sCrochet.com. And I'm going to do uh, 15 chain stitches to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oop, eight. That one didn't want to go through. Nine. we go 15 chain stitches. I'm going to single crochet, skip the first one, single crochet into the second chain from my hook and then continue with single crochets all the way across. So I should have 14 when I'm done. This is a good project. Um, if you're not used to working with a smaller hook, because it's very small and it'll be over quick, but it's great practice. Um, and it makes such a cute little cross. Um, you could, you know, put this on your Bible cover. You could, um, you know, put it on a ribbon, use it as a bookmark. And of course, you could applique it to something else. Lots of things you can do with this cute little design. And it's very quick. There's my last one. Let's just double check and make sure I got 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Excellent. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this off and weave in my ends. Now this, end, this side that we just worked on, that is the right side. So keep that in mind. Snip right about there. Finish that off. Now, I usually just use my hook to weave in my ends. You can certainly go ahead and get the yarn needle out. Um, and I'm not going to do a super great job of this right now because I'm going to try to be quick for y'all. We'll just pull that through. Oh, just a couple of times. And we'll go ahead and uh, pull through our starting tail as well. That's 
good enough for now. You'll probably want to take a little more time. Um, but we're going to come back and edge around this later. So if you wanted to leave it to uh, edge in when at that point, you certainly could as well. So that's my, my right side. So I'm going to take my hook, pick up the end of my yarn again. And we're going to join this together. So go ahead and make another slip knot on your hook. So your pattern says with right side facing, which we established as the side, join, well it says W because it's thinking white, but we're going to join our pink with a slip stitch into the seventh single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll just insert through both loops. Pull loop through and then pull it through your slip knot. Okay? We'll do a chain one, single crochet into the same stitch that you joined into, so that was the seventh one, and then do a single crochet into the eighth stitch. So we've done a single crochet in the two middle stitches of our horizontal bar. Okay? That was row one. We're going to chain, turn, and work in both each single crochet. Do another single crochet. One, two. That's row two. We're going to do this until we get to row five. So chain one, turn. This is row three. Chain one, turn. This is row four. Chain one turn, and this will be row five. It'll be our last row. All right, and now we're gonna snip our yarn and finish it. This time, I think I'm gonna leave the tail not woven in and show you how I um, will weave it in as I go around doing the edging. And you can certainly pick whichever way you're most comfortable with. Some people prefer to weave it in on their own. Some people prefer to um, work it in as they go around the edge. Either way works perfectly fine. So what you're looking at now, you have your base row that was 14 stitches. We'll have six stitches on this side. We put that into stitches seven and eight. And then there's six more on that side. Now with the same right side forward, we're just going to turn it upside down and do the long vertical part, the bottom of the cross. So pick up your long strand of pink again, get your slip knot on your hook, All right, and then when you pick this up, we're going to start in um, the eighth, well, the seventh chain from where we started, the eighth from this side, it's um, right underneath the second single crochet that we did uh, for the top of the vertical bar. So there's that, and we're just going to go straight down into here with a slip stitch. So one loop, pull it through, holding it a little too tight, there we go. Pull it through, and then pull it through the slip knot from the hook. All right, so again, chain one, do a single crochet into that same spot where we joined, and then do a single crochet in the next foundation chain as well. You'll see here's the, the single crochet that we did for the top bar, and so this is just going to be directly below it. Okay, so we've got two single crochets. That was row one. We'll chain one turn. This is row two. And again, we're just gonna do two single crochets across each row. This time we're gonna go until we get 11 rows. So here's row two. Row three. Row four. 
And yes, I do find it helpful to count out loud. Even if I was by myself, I'd probably still be counting out loud because now I've just forgotten how many I did. Let's see, I think that was one. Is that three? We'll say it was, I think it was four. You can also get little row counters, but for something this short, you can probably just keep track of it. I think this is eight. I'm going to count when I get to the end. So now you can actually see it starting to look a little bit like a cross. There at first it was uh, just a lot of bars, but now we're starting to see the cross take shape. Right, I'm pretty sure this is row number 10. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and see if I can count. So we have one, two, three, four, six. Yeah, I'd say that's row 10. So we'll do one more. Gives to 11. All right, so there's row 11. This time, do not cut your yarn. We're going to go ahead and um, start doing the border. So when you're ready to do the border, this is done with pickets. Now, if you don't know what a picket is, don't worry. They're really easy. With the right side of the cross facing you, that's this side. If you need to put a stitch marker on it um, so you remember, go ahead and do it. Don't worry about it at all. With my right side facing me, I'm going to chain two. All right. And then do a slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. That's one, two. Not a full single, just a little slip. There we go. And then we're going to work down the side. So we'll skip this row and work a slip stitch into this second row. Alright, it's a little hard to see on the corner. You'll see the next one a little better. So then we repeat. Chain two, slip stitch in the chain, the second chain from the hook, which is the first chain stitch you did. And then let's see, skip a row, do a slip stitch. And you see there's our little picket. It's just a little bump up, creates a nice little edge. So we'll continue doing this around, chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. Let's see, skip a row, slip stitch into the next row. Now you can start to see that the, the pattern is starting to make there. Slip stitch, skip a row, slip stitch to join it back down. Pickets are a lot of fun. They can give you a really neat edging. Skip a row and then we'll go in, I think, right here as our slip stitch. All right, so now we're ready to go across the bottom of the horizontal bar. Like I said, here's my end that I'm gonna work in as I go. So we'll do two chains, slip stitch in the second one from the hook, the first one you did, and then as we're turning, let's see when we went in there, we'll call that the first stitch, and then this is the second one, so we'll go into the second one. And I'm gonna just hold that tail in with the yarn as I go in with the body of the work. And we'll hold it in again. We'll do two slip stitches, or two chain stitches, sorry. Then a slip stitch. And then we're gonna, now, now that we're working across the bottom instead of across the side, we'll skip a single and then slip stitch into the following one. 
since we're doing slip stitches and not single crochets, that tail's not getting woven in quite as well as it would if we were doing a single. So you may need to go back and weave it in a little more when you're done, or just clip it back. Depends on how long you left it in the first place. There's that one, skip one, and then this is to into the very end of the row. And then turn around, chain two, slip, whoops, don't slip off your hook. And then this one, you gotta be a little more careful when you're turning around the rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it in the very next stitch. I'm gonna work in both loops. And that way, so I have a, a little bump right there on the very end of my hook, of my bar. And then we'll keep going across the top. This is the easiest part because it's really easy to tell where you gotta put your hook in because let's see, we skip this one, go and do the next one. Instead of trying to figure out what your rose is, you just skip a stitch. Skip one, go into the next one. Skip one, go into the next one. So I'm gonna finish doing this all the way around. When I'm done, I can go ahead and cut my yarn and weave in my ends, and then I will come back and show you how to make the little flower that goes in the center and how to put that on. Okay, so I finished doing the edging on my pink cross. You can see it turned out a little bigger than the white one here. Um, I do tend to stitch fairly loose, so you know whichever way yours turns out is perfectly fine. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the center flower. Since this is pink, I'm gonna do a white flower So take your white yarn, or whatever color you're using. I'm gonna start with a slip knot. Come on, you can do it. All right, there we go. All right, and you're gonna chain one. Okay, that's your center of your flower right there. Now to make the petals, you're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four, and then do a slip stitch in the center, which is our first chain here. Okay, that's one. We're gonna do that five, a total of five times. Three, four, slip stitch in the center. You can always find it because of your slip knot right there. All right, so there's two petals. Two, three, Four. That's a third petal. That's our fourth petal. So we'll do one more. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, great. Now you can see my center stitch here is awfully big, so I'm gonna just pull on my slip knot and it tightens it right up. Okay, so then we'll finish off. Leave a fairly long end on this one because we'll need it to sew it onto our cross. Let's see, oh, that should be enough. Finish that off nice and tight. Like I said, you can adjust it with your uh, the tail from your slip knot, so you have a nice tight little flower. Okay, I am going to break out the yarn needle for this. I find it easiest to fold the yarn in half and just kind of wiggle it onto the needle. 
All right, so let's see. This is the right side. So just put your flower right there in the center. We're just gonna tack it on real quick. Now see this tail? That's from our slip knot. Cut it a little bit closer and then it'll just pop right underneath our flower. So just a few little loose stitches. You might want to do it, um, depending on what you're using for, you might want to sew it on a little firmer, a little looser, just depending on whatever you're going to end up using this for. For me, yeah, that should be plenty secure. So then we'll just knot it off here in the back. I always do a double knot. I'm paranoid about them coming undone. Trim that a little bit. Well, we'll weave it in and then we'll trim it. Just keep going around the same way we sewed it on. That'd be enough. That's why I love these little clippers. They're so easy to get in real close up to your work. All right, so we're almost done. I want to do one more thing. So the last step for our Easter cross is to put the little French knot right in the center of the flower. So I'm going back to the pink I was using for the main part. I'm going to come up from the back as close to the center of the flower as we can. I've tied a little knot on the end of this yarn, but if you pull too hard it will come all the way through. So just when you feel that gentle pressure go ahead and stop. Now we're going to make a French knot. So starting from where the thread comes out of the middle of the flower, you can wrap it around your needle mm, twice. We'll do twice. More times would make a little bit of a bigger knot. Then turn your needle right back down. Now typically you do go back in the same hole. I usually go just a little off to the side. Gives you a little extra protection from pulling through. Okay? So use one finger to hold that knot there near the bottom. Pull through gently. And that's how you make a French knot. Then on the back, I'll just um, sew this in. I'll probably go through the knot. This is my the same strand I've been working with. I'll probably go through the knot there, make sure that's nice and secure, and then tie off my ends. And then I'm done. And I've got a cute little pink and white Easter cross. Like I said, it's a little bigger than this one here. That's fine. Um, so make as many of these as you like. Like I said, they'd be great for applicating onto maybe a Bible cover, or I could see some cute little hair bows made out of this, or um, put a ribbon on the bottom, use it as a bookmark. The possibilities are endless. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, you can find all the supplies for this project at maggiescrochet.com. Thanks for watching. Draw up a loop, draw through two, draw through one. Yarn over. Or if you accidentally drop it, those um, loops won't fall off your hook. So now I'm going to continue on. Skip that one, pick up this one, skip, 